Good morning, folks. It's Nikki Jordan here with God Space, and I would like to talk to you about inspiration. So inspiration is something that's been a little bit elusive to me lately, and I, so I've had to think about this a bit. In fact, I felt like a fallow field, if you know what that is, you know, a field that's been worked so much, and it's kind of dead, <laughs> doesn't produce as much anymore, and someone decides to leave it fallow. So I'd like to talk about our life. You know, your life is your job. And if you don't like your job, then what are you going to do, right? You got to change something. But where do we seek inspiration from? Because when you've been doing, let's say you've been growing corn forever, right? And that's your field. You've been growing corn. You've been nurturing it with everything it needs. And you said you love corn and you, and you really did. And then slowly you stopped liking corn as much, but you're not willing to tell yourself that, right? <laughs> so then suddenly you find yourself, maybe you keep throwing chemicals on it to you know, make it grow more, you're like forcing something out of the out of the ground that's not going to come out. And I've been feeling a little bit like that with my life lately, but I tend to drop things faster um, and just sit there and feel the fallow field, the field that we've left. And we don't know what's going to come yet. So is your life, have you been growing a crop that you don't even want? And maybe you have a, multiple crops, and then, but there's a major one that you you just don't really even want anymore. Where do you get inspiration? So I um, have been finding it in the most unusual places for me. I decided that uh, I was going to do things that I resist, um, that I know that on some level I really want, and I was going to see what was there. So I joined a gym locally, and the, I chose the gym, not just because it's not expensive and I'm only here for a little bit in Maine, but by the guy's energy, there's something about what he created. So inspiration creates, it's an energy that creates. And when you don't have inspiration anymore, there's something that's not creating. And you're, um, you might have like the doors of inspiration are closed because you're doing the same thing over and over again. Right? You're doing or you're thinking that that's what you want when you it's like lying to yourself. <laughs> you're lying to yourself. You don't really want that and you don't know what to do. So you keep doing the same thing. So if you take a moment and stop and you try something maybe a little uncomfortable, um, then you get to watch what's there. So I watch this guy and his energy inspires people. He, he made his gym really inexpensive and, and he offers free training. You know, you just go in and you can learn how to use the equipment and he makes you want to know how to do stuff. He doesn't make it difficult or um, a mountain for you to, uh, to do things. And I think, you know, part of what has uninspired me is the way I set up my business. And part of that was based on a model that came from something I really thought I loved. And then I kind of felt like it was ripping people off. And, and I don't know where to go with this. I have some ideas, but I, um, I kind of stopped doing things. And I, so he, he, what he offers people and the way I watch people come into his business and they're inspired to do stuff and they really do use him and he's enjoying what he's doing. It's amazing. Now where I live, the place that he has is too expensive. So I would maybe find another model. But the other place I've been finding inspiration is from a 15-year-old. Really? From a 15-year-old who I watched during pandemic. Guess who that is? <laughs> and really, they changed their life. They changed their life and they struggled in some very difficult moments to find something in the utter boredom that they could explore and try and create a new way of being. And so when I look, you know, when I posted my post of, um, of journals and day planners and stuff, that was one inspiration from this 15 year old. But I was, it's really when you look at someone's life, someone who is dedicated to making their life because your life is your job a life that they really want when what's sitting there isn't is a really interesting observation because, you know, some people mope and whine and many of us sit there in that moment for a period of time before we choose something because inspiration is an action. It's an energy that creates an action, I should say. And if we don't have that action, 
we don't have anything, but we got to remember that the farmer, the farmer doesn't want to get up every day and do all the things he wants to do to make the crop. He probably enjoys it or she most of the time or likes the outcome of what they created and the contribution to you know society or their customers or just their contribution to their way of life. But they don't want to do it every day. And so I watched this 15-year-old and I think she started looking at the future. What is it that I want my life to be like such that if I do this now, it'll give me what I want. And that is something that a lot of people, maybe in an older part of life, they're like, don't feel like having that kind of discipline or that struggle or whatever it is. But when I watched a 15-year-old doing it, they're really saying, this is the time in my life where whatever I'm doing right now is going to create more in the future or not. And so when we are, get older, you know, you might have your job, your way of life, your family, your lack of family, don't want family, don't want to be bothered with all of that. And, and we buy into this. And when we buy into this, we can't have something different. So what if we looked at our life as a crop or a series of crops that you would grow, right? Just go with me for a minute here. And we know that that needs sun and water and nutrients. And then there may be pests, right, that you have to control. And people might control pests the easiest way by dumping a ton of chemicals on them or whatever. And yet every year they find those pests are still there and they keep putting more on the land. And the land gets less and less fertile and less growth. So what are the pests in your life? What are the things that um, have sort of, you've been avoiding, right? Or that you've been dealing with, with anger or jealousy or blame or any of those things, right? And that what if instead your, your, farm, your crops, right? We're like integrated pest management where you've got like a crop that's planted next to another crop that attracts those things that are kind of pesty and, and it all works together in your life. Cause what we don't like is where we create resistance, right? And when we create resistance, we use energy there and it's an energy that doesn't allow us to be inspired by other things. And so in the last number of days, I've had a lot of resistance. And yesterday was a huge day of resistance. I'm like, okay, I'm going to the gym regardless of whether I'm resistant. I'm going to like go with the idea that I'm resistant and see what happens. See if I get inspired. See what changes. And a lot of things did. In fact, I inspired the guy to teach me for like a full half an hour. He was inspired to teach me something I really wanted to know to make myself better. And here is someone whose model of a business, I was like, yeah, I'm looking at this and what you give is what I want to do. I want to somehow give, I always wanted to teach for free, right? Um, But, you know, of course I need something to live off of. But then I followed these things that are like, no, no, you know, you got to, you got to really charge a lot more for what you do. And, and it, it made my field less fertile. Just me, you know. Um, and so inspiration has to come through the doors that you might be blocking things out with. It has to come through, right? And so when you see something that inspires you, let those doors open, right? Let that flow. Whatever you see from that person or that, um, you know, or that uh, ad or whatever, you know, that class. Um, I've been following teenage, you know, like teenagers who are struggling, small business people who are just amazing, like, I don't know, their energy is amazing, and celebrities who are struggling with stuff. You know, those are some of the places I'm seeking inspiration. And this here, which most of you who know me, is a place I have always sought inspiration. And, you know, I get in the water and the water inspires me, all this stuff. And I'm resistant to so much of it. I wonder if my field is no longer producing because um, we get lazy. We get lazy, right? And, you know, I posted something the other day about if your goals, see if you have a goal or a target or something, whatever you want to call it, of where you want to be, but you're here at the bottom of the mountain and it looks like a huge mountain. 
no one ever got there except step by step, right? And you can take a break, you know, to have some water, you know, whatever. Take a break as you climb that mountain. But not every step is going to be easy. And if you're willing, if you're willing to recognize the not easy steps as a challenge rather than meet them with resistance, then you might be happier. But as I said in the beginning, what if you're growing corn and you don't like corn anymore, but you're still growing it for some reason because you made a commitment to corn? <laughs> or are you a musician and you don't want to be one anymore? Or you say you like a certain um, music or art or food or, um, you know, like you like to go dancing every Friday night. So you go dancing every Friday night because you're saying this what inspires me. And then it doesn't, you know. What if this doesn't inspire me the same way anymore? What if it just literally doesn't? And so it's not that it's not beautiful. It's just that what else is here that I'm not seeing? And what crop can I plant that I don't even know that um, that I don't even know is the crop I wanted? Or I denied it because of all these points of view that I had or all these assumptions. They're probably not points of view so much as assumptions, right? And what if you just had a blank canvas and said, what, you know, you let that field that you've been growing fallow, doesn't mean that it won't come back, right? But you let it fallow. You let it rejuvenate itself over there. And you look and say, what else could I plant? Because your life is your job. If you look at it that way, I mean, there's the nothing you can, you can't leave this job. You can only transform it, right? You can only transform it. So what? Can you allow in? Inspiration is a flow. And you could just say every door that I've shut to inspiration that I do and don't know I've done, right? Because the don't know part is the lack of awareness. That what, what inspiration can I have? And let's just let, like, I feel it in the back of my body. Let, let the back of my body open and let something come in. And, and every moment I resist, it by actually making a judgment of whatever's coming in, I'm going to let go of. Because what if it's like 1% of what's coming in that's going to inspire you, not the whole picture? Maybe there's some element of the way someone lives their life that is inspiring you, but you're looking at the whole picture and thinking that that's what you want. You know, we can give up on things and start something anew. There's no one said we couldn't do that. You don't, there's no definition of who you are. If you are defining yourself a certain way, that is oftentimes part of what shuts everything out. But if you have something that you really want to be, if you see a goal for yourself, a place, a target in the future, are you willing to do the things that the farmer must do? to grow that crop, whether you like it or not, right? Whether you like it in that moment or not, because that not liking it might just be a resistance, right? So try something today that you're totally resistant to that you knew might contribute to you. Just say, what if I get inspired by doing that? You know, that action might inspire you in a way that you never know. Okay, I actually resisted this post for a while. I've been thinking about it telepathically, sending it out there for a few days. And I don't even know that this is any good. But, um, you know, it is okay to have a lull. It's okay. It's okay. Let those doors open and, and, and see what inspires you. Let the ability to be inspired come. And then be surprised by what you're inspired by. I can't wait to go to the gym just to see this guy because he inspires me just to see him, to be around him. And, you know, it's good for my body what I'm doing, but also there's something more. All right. Have a nice day.